Uh, hello everyone, today I'll be going through the Year 12 method, Math Methods 3-4 Worksheet 10. Um, this one is really tricky, so anyway, let's start. So the first question, it's a rather simple product rule question. This is the first half of the product rule, this is the second half. Yeah, then that's how we find the derivative. If you have any um, questions with the product group, please let me know and I can arrange like an individual help session. For part two, we need to use the result from part A to find this. So notice how the integral, so this is the integral of the question I want us to find. It is the same as this because if we minus sign x to this side, it will be the same as x cosine x, right? So we can just do that. The integral of f dash of x is just f of x, which is x sine of, uh, x sine of x, sorry. And then the integral of negative sine x just cosine x. And we plug in the terminals, we'll get 5 pi on 2 minus root 3 on 2. Sorry, 5 pi on 12 minus root 3 on 2. So that's part B. Now it's cas active. So for part A, we need to express this in the form of this. And we know that x, a 2x plus 1 is the same as 2x plus 1 plus 3 minus 3. We can use the plus 3 here to get 2x plus 4, which is the same as here, which is 2x plus 2 minus three, and then we can cancel out the two x plus two. So we get two minus three on x plus two. The next one, we need to find the uh, rule and then the domain of the inverse function. So first of all, we just take the function, we swap x and y and all the working I was showing here. And this is the inverse function we've got. And the domain of this is the range of the function before. So notice how the horizontal, uh, Yet the horizontal asymptote is at um, y equals to two, therefore the domain can't be two because the range of the original function is the domain of the inverse function. So it's real except for two. The next question asks for the area for this shaded graph. So we just go from negative one to one, top function minus bottom function, which is f of x minus x dx, and we get negative three log e three plus four. Don't forget the unit square at the end. The next question, um, the normal way is to do, do um, from negative one to one of f of x minus f inverse of x. But if you notice, this is just the area from the previous question times two. So that's the shortcut, which is two times the previous area, which gets negative six log e three plus eight units squared. So knowing shortcuts like this would save you a lot of time on the exam, basically. Yep, so the next question says that part CD is on this graph and we want to find the exact value of CD, which is the, basically the coordinate of P, such that this distance from the origin is minimum. So we know that to use the distance formula, we need two points. The first point is the origin, which is zero, zero. And the other point is just C and D, which is X and F of X, which means the Y value, right? So we plug that into a distance formula and then solve the derivative equal to zero. So this is the distance formula here. It's just, I didn't write the X minus zero and F, F, of, F of X minus zero part. So we saw the derivative equal to zero and we will get X is equal to uh, square root of three minus two and F of X. So we plug that in. So then we will get basically F of X is equal to uh, negative root three plus two. And then we sub those two values into the normal distance formula, which is this one. Again, I didn't put in the X minus zero squared and X F of X minus zero squared. We will just get um, distance is two root two minus root uh, six units. So distance is, well, in units, so we should add a units at the end, basically. Okay, so the next question, this may look really complicated, but it's kind of testing us on one of the math definitions that was um, talked about in the textbook. So here we wanna show that if X1 is less than X2, it implies that G of X1 is less than G of X2. So basically this means that the graph is strictly increasing because if X increases, the Y value must increase. So. To prove that, we, we find the derivative of the function. So g dash of x is equal to k squared minus one on bracket x plus k squared. So we know that since k is always greater than one, because the question tells us that, this thing cannot be less than zero, right? Because on the top here, if k is greater than one, then the top will always be a positive number and the bottom is a square here. So that will also be a positive number. Therefore, g dash of x is always greater than zero if k is bigger than one. Therefore, g of x is strictly increasing. Therefore, we can prove the definition that if x1 is less than x2, that just implies that g of x1 is less than g of x2. Okay, so the next question wants us to find, so this, this basically, um, this question wasn't complete, so I kind of just completed it here. It wants us to find the capital X, which is the intersection of g of x and y equals negative x. 
So we will show that negative L of X equals to G of X for X. And we get those two values. So this question is really tricky because we have to consider which one of those values we can use. And the final answer is X equals to negative K plus square root of K plus K squared plus uh, minus one. The reason for that is as K gets bigger, if we choose the negative number, which is, or if we choose a negative side, sorry, it will be X equals to negative K minus K squared minus one. And if we're plugging a K value that's like, for example, much bigger than one, let's say K is a hundred, then this X value will be a very, very, very um, big negative number, right? So if we look at this graph here, theoretically, if the graph line is like this, right? It's not really possible for this line to intersect a really, really low, like, cause this graph goes really low here, right? And if it's X equals a hundred, that will be all the way like outside this paper here. So that's not really possible. Therefore, we can only consider the other end, which makes more sense as well, because if we are decreasing the K here, we are increasing the K. So if we're decreasing the K here, we're increasing the K here. So they kind of relatively cancel each other out. So our number can remain um, not, that, not as big as before, which makes more sense in this case, because the line, if the line wants to intersect this graph, it must be somewhere close to, you know, zero, the value basically. So therefore we know that X is equal to this value. Y is just the negative of X, right? So we can just negative the X value to get that as the Y value. Okay, so the next question asks us to find K for which the coordinate of the capital X is negative half and half. That's quite simple. We're just solving the X is equal to negative half and we get K is five and four. Okay, so the next question is a very, very tricky question. So it says here, these are the vertices of this triangle as we can see here. And SK is the square of the um, area of the triangle X, Y, Z. So let's look at the area first. So I kind of drew this um, triangle out here. We know that the length is of this bottom side here. So this let edge here is two root two because this is two and this is two. So by Pythagoras, we know that the that this length here is two root two. And then we know that the height is also by Pythagoras because we know the coordinate of capital X is what we found above, which is um, this, this here, right? So by Pythagoras, the height of this triangle would be the square root of the X value plus the Y, so the X value squared plus the Y value squared, which is this. And remember when we're doing the area, we have to do length, times height times a half. And we have to square at the end because the question says it's the square of the area, right? So now we have the area function defined like that. So the height here is just this thing above here. And then we need to solve that area. We solve area squared is bigger or equal to one. And then we solve for K and we'll get K is uh, between one and five on four inclusive. Notice here, we'll also get a negative value for K, but since K has to be bigger than one, we can re reject that basically. Yeah, so this question is definitely uh, quite a tricky question. So the next question, it asks us to find a general rule for the area of this function here. So we know that these functions will always, so the, we know that graph, the graph of G of X will also, will always intersect Y equals X, uh, X equals negative and what equals negative one and one because X and Y has to be equal to each other. So that's the only two points of intersection basically. So we know, that, so then for the area, we just know that it's the integral from negative one to one of the top function, which is G of X minus the bottom function, which is X dx. So that's the rule for A of K. And the final question, I've kind of drilled this to show you why that's the case. So it wants us to show that the area cannot exceed two for all K is bigger than one. So these, so I, I guess as methods question gets harder, because of course this is probably the, this is like the final question of that test paper. And um, they are not expecting you to like, I guess, do the normal way of like math. They are more expecting you to, I guess, think graphically and then try to like predict what's going to happen without actually seeing it. I mean, of course you can use a slider on a CAS, but if we think about it, if we kind of drew drawing this thing here and this triangle here is kind of re represented by this one, right? So we know the area of this triangle is two times two divided by two, which is two. And we know that this curve is within this triangle. If you think about it, since this curve is strictly increasing, right? So since we know that curve has to go through one and one and starts at a negative one and one, 
if it's if it's a strictly increasing curve, it would never go outside of this triangle. Because if we go outside this triangle, theoretically, if you see this red line goes outside, then it has to decrease to get to one on one. But we just proved before that this curve is strictly increasing. So a decreasing pattern like this won't, won't happen. Therefore, it will never actually exceed, it will actually never go outside of this uh, triangle's border, which means that the area will never exceed two. Yeah, so that's basically the reason of why a of k won't exceed two. Of course, it will be uh, bigger than zero as well, because the area is always, if, it, if there's a line from here to here, that's not y equals to x, then we know that uh, there is at least some area here. So that's why um, a of k is between zero and two. So yeah, this is uh, definitely a really hard question and they require to think graphically rather than mathematically, I guess. All right, so that's all for this worksheet. Uh, if there's any questions, please let me know. It is definitely tricky. So yeah, I'll see you all next week. Mm -hmm.